Differentiability. Recall from single variable calculus that a function f of x is differentiable at x zero if f prime of x zero equals the limit as delta x goes to zero, f of x zero plus delta x minus f of x zero over delta x exists. Also recall that if f is differentiable at x zero, then f is continuous at x zero. And if f is differentiable at x zero, then f has a non-vertical tangent line at the point x zero, f of x zero. As we generalize the definition of differentiability from a function of one variable to a function of two or more variables, we would like to make sure that we still have these properties. In particular, we wanna make sure that a differentiable function is continuous and that differentiable functions have well-defined tangent planes at a given point. You might think it would be natural to generalize the definition of differentiability to a function of two variables by saying that a function is differentiable if both partial derivatives at the given point exist. Unfortunately, in general, these properties that we wish to be satisfied will not be. Let's look at an example so that we could see this. So consider this function f of x, y equals negative one if x and y are both positive and zero otherwise. This function has a discontinuity at the point zero, zero, right? Because at zero, zero, the function is defined to be zero, but near zero, zero, where x and y are both positive, the function is always negative one. Recall the definitions of the partial derivatives. I have them in the upper right corner there. Let's compute the partial of f with respect to x at zero, zero. That's the limit as delta x goes to zero, f of zero plus delta x zero minus f of zero, zero over delta x. And that's just zero because in the numerator, each of those terms has a zero for the y coordinate. So in order for it not to be zero, the y coordinate has to be positive. So we get the limit as delta x goes to zero, zero over delta x, which is just zero. Similarly, if we look at the partial of f with respect to y at zero, zero, that's limit as delta y goes to zero, f of zero, zero plus delta y minus f of zero, zero over delta y. Both terms in the numerator here have the x coordinate zero. So again, both of those terms are zero. So the numerator becomes zero and that limit just becomes zero. So we see that in this example, not only do both partial derivatives exist at zero, zero, but they're both equal to each other. They're both equal to zero, yet the function has a discontinuity at zero, zero. And so in other words, suggesting that both the partial derivatives exist as a definition of differentiability is not a good idea because we do not get the property that a differentiable function would be continuous. So we need another idea. Going back to the single variable definition of differentiability, let's try to express differentiable a different way that will generalize nicely to something that is more useful. Now, we could rewrite the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x zero plus delta x minus f of x zero over delta x as the limit as delta x goes to zero delta y over delta x, where notice we just substituted delta y for f of x zero plus delta x minus f of x zero. Another way to say that f prime of x zero is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta y over delta x is to say that delta y over delta x is equal to f prime of x zero plus a little error, which we'll call epsilon, where that error of epsilon goes to zero as delta x goes to zero. Bringing the denominator of that expression to the right-hand side of the equation, we see that this is equivalent to delta y equals f prime of x zero delta x plus epsilon delta x, where epsilon goes to zero as delta x goes to zero. This alternative form of the definition of differentiability generalizes nicely to a definition of differentiability that we could use for functions of two variables. We'll say that 
a function z equals f of x, y is differentiable at x zero, y zero. If delta z, which is f of x zero plus delta x, y zero plus delta y minus f of x zero, y zero can be written as delta z equals the partial of f with respect to x at x zero, y zero times delta x plus the partial of f with respect to y of x zero, y zero at delta y plus epsilon one delta x plus epsilon two delta y, where epsilon one and epsilon two go to zero as delta x delta y goes to zero, zero. Let's try an example. Show that the function f of x, y equals x squared plus three y is differentiable everywhere. Use the definition of differentiability that I just gave you. This is a good time to pause the video, try this example yourself, and then resume the video to check your answer against mine. Okay, so first let's compute delta z. Remember delta z is f of x plus delta x, y plus delta y minus f of x, y. In this case, that's x plus delta x squared plus three times y plus delta y minus x squared plus three y. Multiplying everything out gives us x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared plus 3y plus 3 delta y minus x squared minus 3y. The x squares cancel, the 3y's cancel, and we're left with 2x delta x plus 3 delta y plus delta x times delta x plus 0 delta y. Notice I just rearranged the terms here so that they match up with the expression of delta z in red up there. We have a function times delta x plus a function times delta y plus an expression times delta x plus an expression times delta y. I threw in the zero there because delta y doesn't appear, so there are zero delta y's. And we see here that 2x is actually the partial of f with respect to x, 3 is the partial of f with respect to y, and we could let epsilon one be delta x and epsilon two be zero. As delta x and delta y both go to zero, epsilon one and epsilon two will also go to zero. Epsilon one because it's equal to delta x, which we're sending to zero, and epsilon two because it's constantly zero. A couple of useful theorems about differentiability. The first is that if f is differentiable at a point x0, y0, then f is continuous at x0, y0. The proof of this is very, very similar to what you would do in single variable calculus. The second, if both first partials of f exist and are continuous at x0, y0, then f is differentiable at x0, y0. In other words, for most of the functions that we're concerned with in this course, we don't actually have to go through that whole process that we did in the last example to check differentiability. If we notice that both first partials of f exist and are continuous, then f is automatically differentiable at the given point. So as an example, let's do the last example using theorem two instead of going through that whole procedure that we did previously. Pause the video, answer this question, and then resume the video to check your answer against mine. So again, we want to show that f of xy equals x squared plus 3y is differentiable everywhere. Well, the partial of f with respect to x at xy is 2x, and the partial of f with respect to y at xy is 3. These partials exist everywhere, and they're continuous everywhere. So the result follows immediately from that second theorem that I just mentioned total differential. The total differential dz is defined as the partial of z with respect to x times dx plus the partial of z with respect to y times dy. Here are two different notations for expressing the same thing. Let's try some examples. In these examples, see if you can compute the total differential. Pause the video, try these examples yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. So z equals 2x sine y minus 3x squared y squared. So dz is we first compute the partial of that expression with respect to x. That's 2 sine y minus 6xy squared times dx plus, and then we compute the partial with respect to y, which is 2x cosine y minus 6x squared y all times dy. For the second one, 
I didn't define the total differentiable for a function of three variables. I think it's pretty easy to understand what that would be. DW is going to be the partial of that expression with respect to x dx. So we have 2x dx plus the partial with respect to y dy. That's 2y dy plus the partial with respect to z dz. So the last term is 2z dz. Linear approximation and equations of tangent planes. The main idea here is that delta z is approximately equal to dz. Remember that delta z is f of x zero plus delta x, y zero plus delta y minus f of x zero, y zero, and dz is the total differential, the partial of f with respect to x at x zero, y zero, dx, plus the partial of f with respect to y at x zero, y zero, dy. If we do a little substitution here, letting x equal x0 plus delta x and y equal y0 plus delta y, we can rewrite this expression as f of xy is approximately f of x0, y0 plus the partial of f with respect to x at x0, y0 times x minus x0 plus the partial of f with respect to y at x0, y0, y minus y0. Two things to note here. One is that I brought f of x0, y0 over to the right-hand side of this approximation. And two, that dx and delta x are the same thing, and dy and delta y are the same thing. The expression on the right here is often written as L of xy, and it's known as the linearization of f at x0, y0. When we approximate f of xy this way, we often call it a linear approximation or a tangent line approximation of the function. The equation of the plane passing through the point x0, y0, f of x0, y0 with normal vector, partial of f with respect to x at x0, y0, partial of f with respect to y at x0, y0, negative 1, just writing the equation in point normal form, we get negative 1 times z minus f of x0, y0, plus partial of f with respect to x at x0, y0, times x minus x0, plus partial of f with respect to y at x0, y0, times y minus y0, is equal to 0. If you look at this carefully, you'll notice that this is basically the same thing as the linearization above. We could also rewrite this by uh, putting f of x, y in place of z, since z is equal to f of x, y. Bringing the negative f x, y minus f of x, zero, y, zero over to the other side of the equation and interchanging the two sides, we see we can write this as f of x, y minus f of x, zero, y, zero is equal to the partial of f with respect to x at x, zero, y, zero times x minus x, zero plus the partial of f with respect to y at x, zero, y, zero times y minus y, zero. Or equivalently, we can replace the left-hand side with z minus z0. Okay, this expression is the equation of the tangent plane to z equals f of xy at the point x0, y0, z0, where z0 is f of x0, y0. As an example, let's try finding an equation of a tangent plane. Try this example yourself, pause the video, and then resume the video to check your answer with mine. So find an equation of the tangent plane to the hyperbolic paraboloid, z equals 3x squared minus 5y squared at the point 2, 1, 7. Okay, so let's let f of xy equal 3x squared minus 5y squared. Then the partial of f with respect to x at xy is 6x. And if we plug in a 2 for x and a 1 for y, we get 6 times 2, which is 12. The partial of f with respect to y at xy is negative 10y. And if we plug in a 2 for x and a 1 for y here, we get negative 10 times 1 or negative 10. So we can now write an equation of the plane as z minus 7 equals 12 times x minus 2 minus 10 times y minus 1. If we want to solve this for z, then we can multiply out the 12 times x minus 2 to get 12x minus 24. And the negative 10 times y minus 1 is negative 10y plus 10. Bringing the 7 over and combining all the constants, we get z equals 12x minus 10y minus 7. One more example. 
let L of X, Y be the linear approximation to F of X, Y equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared at the point three, four. Compute the error in approximating F of 3.04, 3.98 by L of 3.04, 3.98 and compare with the distance between the points three, four and 3.04, 3.98. Go ahead and pause the video, try this example yourself and then resume the video to check your answer against mine. So first let's compute the partial derivatives. F sub X at X, Y is X over the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And if we plug in a three, four X and a four, four Y, we get three fifths. F sub Y at X, Y is Y over the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And again, if we plug in three for X and four for Y, we get four fifths. So the linearization L of X, Y is five. We get the five by plugging three in for X and four in for Y into the original expression for F of X, Y. The square root of three squared plus four squared is the square root of 25, which is five. Okay, plus, so we have five plus the partial respect to X, which is three fifths times X minus the X coordinate of the point, which is three, plus the partial of F with respect to Y, which is four fifths times Y minus the Y coordinate of the point, which is four. Now, L of 3.04, 3.98 is 5 plus 3 fifths times 0 0.04 plus 4 fifths times negative 0.02, which comes out to 5.008. F of 3.04, 3.98, you might want to use a calculator for this. That's the square root of 3.04 squared plus 3.98 squared, which is approximately 5.00819. The error in the approximation is approximately the difference, which comes out to 0 0.00019. The distance between the two points, we'll use the distance formula. 3.04 minus 3 is 0 0.04. 3.98 minus 4 is negative 0 0.02. I wrote 0 0.02 because it doesn't matter because we're squaring. So 0 0.04 squared plus 0 0.02 squared, take the square root, we get about 0 0.045. So if we take the error in approximation and divide by this distance, that comes out to about one over 250. So in other words, the error in approximation is about one 250th of the distance.